through. So this race would be official. I don't think they'll restart it on rain tires. Well, that takes all the fun out of it. Well, it's just me speculating, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we but can, I don't think they will. <laughs> we can confirm now it is going to be Joe Nemechek that gets the lucky dog. We only have uh, four cars that are out of this race, Kennington, Ranger, Shepard, and Jeff Green. And as again, the lights are still on on the pace car here at Montreal. Marty, you, you, you mentioned the weather. I'm sorry, Rusty. You mentioned the weather and the combination of this caution in our third restart, double file, the idea of weather coming in. You see some cars hitting pit road, Michael McDowell, along with Scott Speed. That changes the mentality of drivers. Again, the urgency comes into play. Man, and you took the words out of my mouth because as a driver right now, you're thinking urgency, rain's coming. The, the crew chief, Shella, get all you can, drive yes. your brains out. This will be an interesting restart. Well, McDowell last pitted on lap number 30. Here he is coming in on lap number 42. Let's send it to Jim. All right, as he said, here comes Michael McDowell. He's having trouble turning right. He wants to be freed up. They'll take four tires, fuel, wedge adjustment for Michael McDowell. Also coming in, Scott Speed, Carl Edwards, Ron Fell, all kind of very, very busy down here on this section of pit road. Scott Speed wants to have him loosened up just a little bit. Very tight getting off pit road there, as you see, for Scott Speed. Behind him, Carl Edwards is having issues turning right. He made a slight air pressure adjustment and dropped the track bar on the 60 car. So there's a joke in there somewhere about a NASCAR driver turn, having troubles turning right. <laughs> the fact is that if, if, if the drivers are struggling with those right-hand turns, the crew chiefs will be more aggressive with the adjustments because the majority of the turns on this course are right-handers. If they were struggling with the left-handers, they'd compromise, say, well, maybe a little bit of air adjustment, but these will be pretty big adjustments. Well, we have 32 laps to go. Uh, by our calculations, nobody that's pitted right here can make it. So let's uh, check down on the 16, Shannon. Well, what a day for Trevor Bain, you guys. He had the radio issues before we even went green flag racing. Missed a, a huge wreck on the racetrack. He then got a flat, hit the wall. Because of that left rear damage, you see them working actually on the left side of the car. He moved the uh, area where the fuel tank goes into the car. He bent it up so they actually cannot get the fuel can into the car. Right now, they're trying to bang it out so they're able to fuel that car. Obviously, that's pretty important here in Montreal. Yeah, they, they worked on that left rear on that, and then they the earlier damage with the contact with uh, Marie Dufault on the right front. And they're putting more uh, bear bond on that. As uh, we continue this caution, we're going to step aside once again. You're looking at the race leader, Jacques Villeneuve. He finished third at Road America in that car. Does he pick up his first win here in the Nationwide Series? Well, let's get caught up on our five-hour energy rapid recap. Of course, the local hero Jacques Villeneuve picks up his first pole in 10 years, and that was delighting the hometown fans here in Montreal. And then early pit issues for a number of championship contenders. Reed Sorensen, right now he is shown in 28th position. And the 30 also of Boris said as he also has had his problems on pit road. And then Trevor Bain's troubles. The first one was none of his doing. That's Marieve Dufault, and he clips his right front against her right rear. And one of the scariest times of the race right there, Marty. That was a scary, scary deal with her parked in the middle of the track. And then this one, he just came too hot through the corner and ended up uh, cutting the tire. In the same corner that he had that issue with that, uh, that car spun. And right now, Trevor Bain is 19th, and we can tell you Sorensen 28th. And let's get into uh, more with there is Danica Patrick right now shown in the top 10 for the first time today. Rick? Yeah, DC's running ninth position right now. And I have to tell you, I told you a little bit earlier that they were, everybody's talked about the brakes and that Danica was complaining that it was just a little warm out there. During that last yellow, she was calling and talking to her crew chief, Tony Yuri Jr. You can hear what she said about the trying to cool off. I need a scoop in this car so that I can actually get to the air out there and at least cup it a little bit. Riding around with your uh, eyes real, with your hand out the window a little bit. Oh yeah, but my hand doesn't get very far. Yeah, not the tallest driver out there, not the longest arm, but the advantage now, there is some cloud cover, co cover coming over, which is going to cool things down. The question is whether it's going to bring any rain along with it. Danica stands five foot two, 106 pounds, and if she reaches out the window while we're on board here, you'll get an idea. She can barely get it out the window. You know, Marty, it leads me to wonder if her cool air box, the cool air box, has, has failed because if you lift the visor, then you're going to lose all that uh, benefit. Good so, point. 
Let's reset it for you. You got Jacques Villeneuve as he has taken drivers right again. He is your race leader. Marcus Ambrose alongside. Remember, he started in the rear of this field. Alex Tagliani and then Ron Fellows will be fourth. Lucky Dog went to Joe Nemechek. We have 28 cars on the lead lap. No one took a wave around this time as the race leaders stayed out. We only have four cars out of the race. Kennington Ranger, Shepard, Jeff Green. And remember, twice in the history of this event, we have run in the rain. And there are the rain tires getting ready. They are saying 40 to 45 minutes away. Now, if we can stay lean, mean, and green, 31 laps to go, we might be able to sneak this in. Boy, I mean, we, we got a tug of war going here between the weather and the, the amount of time we have left to run these laps. So, rain tires. An option or not? I don't think it's going to be an option. I really don't. I'm a positive thinker. Glass is always half full for me, man. I think they're going to get this race in. It's going to be tough, though. Pace car pulls on the pit road. Here they come through turn 13 and then 14. Four of the top five drivers right now are Canadian drivers. As they come down, here is your race leader, Jacques Villeneuve, as they will get the green flag. Slow, 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 and all of a sudden, there goes the green flag into the air. So they really held up. Almost had a log jam in the back there. All right, this is the time of the race when stuff starts heating up in this particular corner right there. Oh, no. jogged off the track. He overdrove. And oh, oh. the clip, Marcus Ambrose. Both Canadian drivers, all three of our top guys right there. Alex Tagliani had to check up. He's going to lose some spots. Everybody gets underway, and now they've got their work cut out for them. We talked about it five minutes ago. The weather has that type of effect on the drivers, that urgency. You, you make things happen, and sometimes you regret it. And now Jacques Villeneuve finds something that he has not had all day, a damaged race car, and he's going to have to figure out if he can get it back to the front. Ron Fellows is your race leader. Patrick Carpentier in his swan song. His final race is running second. Leffler in third. Tagliani fourth. Robbie Gordon fifth. And all kinds of smoke. And oh, Elliot Sadler smoking. And the 22 goes around again. So it has gone from bad to worse for Jacques Villeneuve just that quickly. Yeah, this is the part of the race where everything's going haywire now. Now the drivers are out of brakes like we talked earlier. Their brakes are low. They can't stop. And they sail it down to that turn one. Boy, you saw Jacques Villeneuve, the 22 car, lock up the rear brakes like our Tim Brewer was talking about earlier. Got that baby loose and one off course. You can see all the damage on the 22. Let's go back and show you what happened again on the restart. Marcus Ambrose was uh, racing hard, doing a great job, and I think that Jacques's like, wow, I'm not going to have him cleared as easy as before. Rusty, I think you're right. He locked up the rear brakes. Then when he got in that grass, he lost the steering. Probably should have considered stopping and exiting turn two. In hindsight. And then here's the second incident. Oh, oh he got help from Ambrose. Yeah, Ambrose is <laughs> mad right now. He's yeah. mad at the 22 car. He's taking it out on him. Yeah, you can bet that was uh, retaliation. From on board. Here's what it looked like. The 20 off the track here, but you're really piling up ahead of you. I'm surprised Tagliani didn't have some serious damage in that deal, but he managed to escape. He is still running in the third position. So it's uh, the French-Canadian second and third right now with Carpentier and Tagliani. Marty, we're getting a lot of overcast here right now. This track's starting to cool down. In fact, it's getting a little bit dark here in Montreal. It's definitely going to change the conditions of this track. Taking a peek on the inside. On the left side of your screen, Elliot Sadler's in. Rick. And they are working on the right front, trying to pull that fender out. They've gone ahead and changed tires. They put fuel in, but they've got a problem on this side. They're doing what they can to get it done. The biggest problem, though, was repairing the damage to the right front. They were still working on that. Shannon? Well, Marcus Ambrose is in in the nine. They're going to make right side tire change. They're also going to check that clearance, make sure there's no rub. He also said that the uh, wheel, the steering wheel, is pulling just a little bit to the left, but they're just going to take care of that right side damage right now. So they'll get back out on the track. Meanwhile, you saw Alex Tagliani get around round Carpentier and so did the 38 of Leffler so let's reset it it's fellows Tagliani Leffler Carpentier Robbie Gordon and Allgaier your top six and the only advantage for Marcus Ambrose is that he can go the rest of the way now without stopping yeah that, that's true he can make it on fuel now and that's that's one good thing I really think that those guys have made the last pit stop on lap 30 if they get enough caution flags and we talked about this about six you're gonna need I think they can make it on fuel Marty well, let's listen in on uh, Ron Fellows radio I'm sorry, Jim. When you're good to go, and you got plenty of clearance. 
Jim, what do you got for us? Okay. Actually, guys, that voice is the only voice you're going to hear on Ron Fellows Radio. That was Crew Chief Jim Long. Ron Fellows cannot talk back to his crew. His radio, the microphone, is not working. They've been using hand signals, Fellows has, to indic indicate loose or tight when they come in on pit stop. So, Jim Long, on his first race this year, has a driver that can't talk back to him. That sounds pretty good. This is difficult enough, but to not be able to communicate with your driver and make proper adjustments, that's ah, almost impossible. Rusty, you said earlier, he's as smooth as silk, and that's why he's leading right now. Well, you take a look at him right now. I mean, he's run so many different styles of race cars in his, in his career. He's got a great career, and it's just been, he's, because of that, he knows how to be smooth. Shannon, got to be a disappointment down there to 22 camp. Absolutely, but these guys are going to work, Rusty. They're going to do what they can to get him back out there with four tires. They're going to check all that clearance, make sure that there's no rust on those tires. And Jock is saying inside the, uh, in the car right now, guys, listening on the radio, that he's having a little bit of an issue with his steering. Maybe it's pulling a little bit, so of course they'll try to get that fixed up as well. On the right side of your screen, Alex Tagliani takes the race lead from Ron Fellows as you finish up, Shannon, and the work continues on the 22. So Tagliani shoots back in front for the first time, and he will be our sixth different leader. He's a teammate to Jacques Villeneuve this weekend, and he is absolutely the second strongest car, qualified on the outside pole. And right now, it's a Canadian day. Well, I'll tell you what, when you saw the problem with Jacques Villeneuve going into turn one and two and right in front of the major grandstands with all those Canadians, they went ooh, but when Tagliani cleared it, they went ah. <laughs> so it was definitely an ooh-ah moment for these guys. And look at the right side of your screen. Jacques Villeneuve is still on pit road, so he is now one lap down. And the hopes of all these hometown fans for their local hero, they're in some serious, serious jeopardy. Yeah, that's a disappointment, obviously, for he and the team. And, uh, but there are still some... Still some locals to cheer from, and four rather, and then, and then driver leading, Alex Tagliani has done a great job. Not a mark on that car. He is from Le Chenet, Quebec, has had two other starts in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. This would, without a doubt, be his best run in this car. Can you believe Jason Leffler? He's running third, and he's shown muscle all day long. Yeah, and he's very, very concerned about his brakes. He's trying to cool them down all he can, because we heard him earlier say, my brakes are gone. And Robbie Gordon just got around him. Let's get an update on that 12 car. How about it, Shannon? Well, guys, this truly is a team on a budget. When I spoke with Chad Walter earlier this morning, he told me they were only able to test with Tagliani for two hours this week just to kind of shake down the car. This is also the same engine that Brad Keselowski won with at Kentucky. So this is a two-race engine. They've been pretty careful with their equipment and just trying to get out there and get the win because they told me they feel like they deserve to get to victory lane. Well, his day job, of course, is driving for Sam Schmidt Motorsports in the IndyCar Series. Sat on the pole for this year's Indy. Indianapolis 500, but right now he is loving life at the front of this field. Look at that view, and he has got clear track ahead of him and 27 laps to go here at Montreal. Marty, they told me that these cars, in fact, the 12 car, this is their Charlotte primary car coming up. Now, that's a mile and a half oval track. That just goes to show you how this new design nationwide car can run at all the racetracks on the series. I'll tell you what, they might want to try running their road course car at Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> Here are the Canadian drivers in the field and where they are running right now. First and second, Alex Tagliano, Ron Fellows, all the way through with Andrew Ranger, who is out of this race. This week, it's baseball's biggest stage, and Albert Pujols and the Cardinals look to stay in contention for a division title when they take on the Cubs. Cardinals and Cubs and ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. It's presented by Dr. Taco Bell, 8 o'clock Eastern. It's also available online at ESPN3.com. As the clouds continue to darken here on what was supposed to be a picture-perfect sunny day, rain is off into the distance. And right now, Alex Tagliani has opened up a 1.1-second lead over Robbie Gordon. Ron Fellows is now third, Jason Leffler fourth, Justin Allgaier in fifth, and Danica Patrick is pulling into pit road. She is was in the top ten at one point. Rick, what is going on? It's, she's having brake problems. In fact, she was so concerned that she thought she might not even be able to slow down properly. If you look on the left front of the car, you can see she's had some contact with somebody, possibly during that first turn incident. They're going to go ahead and try and do their best to try to get that left front fender pulled out. Danica was saying that she has so much problems trying to brake, she wasn't even sure she could get all the way around. And then when she hit the pit lane, she thought she didn't have enough ability to slow down. They pull off all the tape off the front and send her back out. 
Well, and that was her one big concern. We talked to her last week at Loudon uh, during the IndyCar race. She said she tested at Road Atlanta, and she said, man, I ate the brakes up there in seven laps. She said, i got to learn how to take care of them. Yeah, I tell you what, she's not alone. This place will tear up brakes.